Hey guys, in this video we'll cover transforming vertices, edges, and faces. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start another new file. So go up to your file menu, pick the option for new, general, and there's no need to save this file. Up until now, we've been talking about transforming this entire object or the entire mesh. But as we talked about in a previous lesson, the mesh itself is made up of vertices, edges, and faces. And we can transform those individual vertices, edges, and faces as well. Let's try that in this lesson. So first, notice in the upper left corner here, it says object mode. Now I don't want you to click on that. I just want you to press the tab key on your keyboard and notice that it switched to edit mode. So now you can click on that drop down menu and you can see you have object mode, edit mode, and then several others. We'll cover those others in future lessons, but right now we're just worried about object mode and edit mode. And we can hit the tab key again. It will go back to object mode, but press the tab key one more time so that you are in edit mode. Now, all of a sudden, you'll see a few things have changed. You'll see some more tools across the left-hand side. We'll cover those in future lessons. Right now, we're still just focused on the cube itself. And something about the display of the cube has changed slightly. So whereas before there was an outline, so I'll press tab to remind us, that now I'm in object mode. There was an orange outline around the whole thing. I'll press tab again. Now I'm in edit mode. That's where we want to be. We notice that we have every edge seems to be highlighted a lighter orange. We have the vertices. Each of those vertexes is got a little orange dot on it. And even the faces themselves seem like they are lightly colored with maybe a, an hazy orange or a see-through orange. That lets us know that everything is selected, all the vertices, edges, and faces right now. Now, we're in edit mode, so we can edit the underlying geometry. So it's like we're inside the object wrapper. So we could think of object mode as having a wrapper around all the geometry in that particular mesh. And then when we get into edit mode, we're inside of that object wrapper. So now we can start editing the individual parts and pieces. So the vertices, edges, and faces. Okay, so try this, hover your cursor and let's go ahead and roll the mouse wheel forward a bit just to zoom in a little more to this cube and hover your cursor over this top corner vertex and click once on it. Notice that everything else seems to have been deselected and we can see that there's this little white dot here around the vertex that you selected. Now, with just that vertex selected, press G for grab and then move your cursor around and you'll notice that you are transforming or moving just that vertex. Go ahead and click to set it down. The attached edges have also had to move or be adjusted because the edge, for example, this one here is defined by this vertex and this vertex. So if this one moves, it has to hang on to it as you move it around. Same is true for this edge and this edge, whereas everything else can just stay the same. So we were able to move the vertex. When we talk about transformations, we're also usually talking about scale and rotate. But because a vertex is an individual point, you can't scale that point to be any larger or smaller. It's just a point. And you can't really rotate a point. It doesn't have an orientation that it's facing, so rotating doesn't do anything either. So when you're talking about transforming an individual vertex, you're really just talking about moving it. Okay, but that being said, let's talk about how we can move, scale, or rotate an edge. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now, back to the lesson. Now, if you just try to click on this edge, 
you won't have selected it. You'll have deselected that vertex, but you won't have selected the edge. And the reason is that unbeknownst to you, you are in vertex selection mode. Now, I don't want you to click, but I want you to notice there are three icons just to the right of edit mode. Don't click on them, but if you hover over the first one, it says select mode, vertex select. If you hover over the next one, just beneath select mode, it says edge select. And the final one says face select. Now, I want you to hover off of it. Go up to your keyboard and not on your number pad to the right, but on the normal numbers that are up top, just above all your letters on your keyboard, press the number two. Notice how it switched to edge select. So now you can come over and click on this edge and you will have selected it. Notice that it's white, whereas the other edges are all black. Now press G for grab and move this around a bit and you'll see the edge stays oriented and scaled in the same position, but you're moving its position around and the object is adjusting or the individual vertices and faces are adjusting to hang on to it. So go ahead and click to set that down. Now this edge can be scaled and rotated, so let's try both. First, let's press S for scale and move your mouse up and down. And you'll notice that you're scaling it to be either smaller or bigger. Again, the rotation is staying the same and where it is in space is the same, but it's scaling along that plane or the direction that it's pointing in each direction. So go ahead and click to finish the scale. Then press R for rotate and you'll see that you can move your cursor and rotate that and then click to set that down. Now we've talked about vertex selection, which we have already done. We've talked about edge selection. When it comes to selecting a face, press the three key on your keyboard. So again, that's not over on the number pad, that's above the letters. You'll notice that you switched to face selection mode here. Now go ahead and click on the top face. You'll see that you've selected it. And again, you can use all three transformations. So first we'll start with G for grab and then move it around a bit and then click to set it down. Press S for scale and then you can move your mouse a bit and then finish your scale by clicking. And finally, R for rotate and you can move your cursor and see how you can twist that around and then click to finish that. So again, watching the menu up here, the number one is for vertex selection, the number two is for edge selection, and the number three is for face selection. Now you can select more than one vertex, edge, or face at a time, and there are two ways to do that. Press two on your keyboard, again, not the number pad two, but just the regular two on your keyboard to switch to edge selection mode. Then click once off in space to deselect everything. And let's say that we want to select a couple of edges. So click on this tall edge here to select it. Then hold down your shift key and come down to one of the bottom edges and click to select it. You'll notice this one is still orange and then this one is white. So white is just the most recent selection. Orange is still in the selection set. With that shift key held down, let's click on one more. So now we have an orange, an orange, and then this one is white. And then let's go ahead and click on one more, this one over here. If at any point you realize, no, I actually only wanted those first three edges, with that shift key held down, you can go ahead and click on that one again that you just selected and it will deselect it. Notice this one's white. That just means now that's the most recent one that was added to the selection set. You can let go of the shift key, and now your transformations will work on those three edges together. So press G for grab and move it around, and you'll see those edges remain oriented and the same scale and everything else relative to one another the same. It's just their position that you're moving, and then the rest of the object has to adjust. So you can click to set that down. Now the other way to select more than one vertex edge or face at a time is first go ahead and click off in space to deselect everything and then move your cursor up to the upper left of your 3d viewport screen click and hold down and drag a selection box around the entire object and let go and you'll see that you've selected all of the edges you can see here but if you orbit around notice this back edge here is black this one right here is black 
So it turns out that if I look from this direction, I would think, oh, I've selected all of the edges. And you might think that it would select all the way back into space, but it's only for what you can see on your screen. So if I orbit back over here, this edge back here, I couldn't see. And this edge down here, I couldn't see the orientation that I had. And so that means that those were not selected. Now, this is respecting that I was in edge selection mode. So even though I did a selection box around the whole thing, it knew that I was either in vertex, edge, or face selection, and then respected which vertices, which edges, or which faces could it see. In this case, I was in edge selection mode, so it said I can't see those two edges, so they're not going to be selected. Now, that might be okay. You may only want to select the stuff you can see and not the stuff behind, but there's going to be instances where you'll think of this as one big object and you want to select all of the edges or all the vertices or whatever it is you're trying to do. So how would you accomplish that? Well, let's go ahead and click once in space here to deselect everything. If you look up at the upper right of your 3D viewport, you'll see these little sphere icons. And if you hover over any of them, they say viewport shading. You'll notice the one that's selected here, the white dot with the blue background says viewport shading and it's displaying in solid mode. If you go just to the left of that, this will be wireframe mode. Go ahead and click on wireframe. And you'll notice now that you can see through the wireframe to all of the edges. Then let's try to do the same selection we did before. So click and drag a selection box around the entire object and let go. And now you'll see that you've indeed picked up all of those edges, even the ones around the back. So if you ever need to select a bunch of stuff using the selection box and you want stuff to be picked up that's maybe not visible to you because it's hidden by faces, you can click on wireframe mode and then select it. And then you can still move back to the regular solid mode and then do whatever it is that you wanted to do. Now that all being said, go ahead and click off in space to deselect everything. And it's important to know that when you're in edit mode, you're thinking to yourself, I'm editing the geometry to turn this thing into what I want it to look like more. But then when you're thinking of it as an entire object that needs to be moved around in space or doing things relative to other objects, you'll wanna press tab on your keyboard, that will switch you back to object mode. And when you wanna do things to the entire object, like rotate the whole thing, or scale the whole thing, or move the entire thing, even though you could select all of the underlying geometry in edit mode and make some of those transformations, I recommend that in general, until you get better in Blender and you know when to do it differently, in general, when you're doing something to the entire object, you should be in object mode and then do those kinds of transformations at the object mode level. And when you're in edit mode, so press tab to get in edit mode, that's where I tend to think about, I'm tweaking some of the individual parts and pieces of the geometry. So again, even though I showed you how to select the entire thing and all of the edges in wireframe mode, just remember that in general, if you selected everything because you were gonna scale, rotate, or move the entire object, you're probably best off doing that in object mode until you know better. All right, with that being said, we're ready to move on to a set of challenges that will incorporate some of the new things you've learned about editing your object in edit mode. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.